This is how we do it. Not like this, but it's like this. It's like a pizza crunch without the butter. How we doing, my sexy, sexy companions, man? I always say it's been a while, because it has been a while. It's been a while since I've sat here and spoke absolute gums to you. But it's beautiful. It's a religious, releasing experience. I actually sat down last night with the intentions of just chatting away, just uh, shooting the shit. And uh, all the rest of the fucking mad stupid fucking expressions cunts use for talking absolute shit, But I was one of the weird moods yesterday. The only way I could describe it is manic. I felt manic as fuck. I was running about like a blue ass liar. I had a pure busy day. That's my life, right? It consists of many busy days. I love it, but I find uh, comfort in the chaos. I've realised that. See, sometimes when it's just kind of madness, everything's just a hundred mile an hour. I relish in that, it gives me a sense of purpose. Like when I'm at events, if I'm filming a, an event, or I'm performing in an event, that kind of high stress. I love it, it's like a drug. It is a drug. Too much shit, of course. Isn't he, isn't he very good for the, the psyche, for the soul, for the spirit? But no enough of it. Nah, you just get lazy and fucking placid and... Ugh, what? Nah, man, you need it, you need it, that's why we talk about drugs and alcohol and even junk food, they're so attractive, because they stimulate that, they give us that wee feeling of pursuit, but it's short-lived, it really is, man, it's very short-lived, but see, what I compare it to, right, see if you look at, like, a if I use a boxing analogy, because obviously I'm preparing for my fight next weekend. If we use sparring or any type of boxing training, right? A hard boxing workout. It is the opposite of the sesh. You want to know why? Because the sesh, right? We think of it as good at the time. At one point, it was good at the time. For me. For you, it was good at the time. After it, you regret it. Fucking wish I'd never done that. You feel like shit. You feel good at the time, you feel like shit after it. A boxing workout or any type of hard exercise or anything, it feels shit at the time, but you feel amazing after it. You regret it if you don't do it. It completely flips the switch. And I've been getting out my nut on the boxing lately. As I say, it is one week until my fight against Jasper. Sorry, my fight. My demolition job against Jasper. The much people are saying to me, ah, oh, the loudest in the room is the weakest in the room. Aye, if he's a bam, I'm not a bam though. I've been training like a beast. I'm going to assassinate Jasper. I'm going to dismember him. I'm going to dispose him. I'm going to hump him. But the spine of a whale. That's what I'm going to do, man. And I'm looking forward to it. I loved the build-up, the press conferences with the press conference the other day. Everybody getting their chance to get their last wee dig in and all that. And see me, I've been getting slaughtered for a fucking young age. No, I mean, I've said it time and time again. I've been getting pounded like raw mince for a young age, verbally. Sometimes physically, but the, the horns, no. But for me... It's my bread and butter. It's a Glaswegian thing as well. Well, you grow up, you get slaughtered. You slaughtered back. It's it's a form of affection, slagging your pals. But men especially, we don't we don't do what lassies do when lassies all comment on each other's forties like that slay. And oh my god, like fire, who is she? All that. We'll maybe write like who is he? Is in who is this prick on a pal's 40s? It's a nice t-shirt, mate. Fancy guineas at back. 
you always rip the shreds of each other, but it's not in a derogatory sense, it's not in a negative manner. For me, anyway, when you're bamming up your pals is a sign of affection, because you're comfortable with slagging them. And me, personally, the more comfortable I get with something, the more friendly I get, the more I slag them. What I'm talking about. And I'm sure many people can relate. It's, so, see when you go to press conferences and that, I imagine it's like, I compare it to like a guy, or even a woman, that's been fighting all their life in school, they're fighting, they're fighting in their scheme, this and that, they're always fighting. Then they, they find a sport like boxing or something where they can channel that energy. This is the exact same thing, except mine's is verbally slagging. It's verbal jousting. It's verbally battering absolute fuck out of some mad rocket that's in front of you. So, that's the only reason I've fucking done this. See, this social media influencer event. The only reason I've done it, I've done boxing. And I've, do, I've done one fight. I had one fight last year. And I put it, I was like, ah, you know what? I wouldn't do this again. I would do the, the influencer thing because there's a lot more exposure in it as well. And there's a lot more avenues to make money. Let's be real. But it's for the slagging aspect of it. I want to be ripping the piss out of somebody before I plow their face into oblivion. Well, Conor McGregor, look, obviously he's kind of fell off a wee bit these days. But uh, the reason I started watching the UFC cause it was because of Conor McGregor. I'll admit, call me a casual if you like. But uh, I liked him. I thought his stuff was funny, the shit he used to say. So I just started watching it and seeing his stuff. By the time I started watching it, it was roughly the time he was... I was heavy late to it. So the time I actually got interested in UFC was roughly when, after he fought Mayweather, that's when I actually started watching the UFC, and that's how I just kind of went, oh, what's this, what's this, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I'd never seen it before, but that's when I just took an interest in it, so I started watching it, and I, I started fucking really liking it, Um, I was able to appreciate the level of cardio, the level of stamina that these fighters needed to do this, this kind of sport, and it made me want to increase, improve my cardio, because I nev- I've religiously never done cardio, well, I've, I've done bodybuilding for I was like 15, on and off, don't get me wrong, but I was a weights guy, I was a, I used to never stretch, I wouldn't stretch, right, because I thought stretching would make my muscles look weird, I wouldn't do cardio, because I thought cardio would make my muscles look weird, Everything was geared towards looking bigger. By the way, if you're getting in about the gym, the new, and you don't know much about it, let me just tell you for the offset. Stretching is imperative. Stretch after every workout. If anything, your muscles will grow. You don't need to do a full body stretch before a workout, but a wee ballistic stretch, you know, fucking get the muscles warmed up, warm up and stretch. Cardio, day cardio, man. Day cardio. It's good for your heart, it's good for your lungs, you just feel healthier. See, you now, I prefer stretching and cardio more than I do weights. I barely even do weights now. I do, see, because I've had this fight, I do kind of boxing oriented exercise. But it was watching the UFC, watching these guys peak physical condition, then, and obviously fucking having limitless, unlimited car- cardio made me just ah, I improved my cardio. And I'd done boxing when I was like 6, 15 in school. I was still in school. I'd done boxing, done it for a year. I was one of the people that watched Rocky. I I was a late bloomer to Rocky, I know. I managed to get a hold of, I think I got like, the Rocky box set and I watched all the Rockies. In fact, tell a lie, it was Rocky 4 I watched. I watched Rocky 4 and I'm like, I want to do boxing. And I was like, I right down, uh, go to my dad to fucking take me to a boxing gym. And uh, I started, it was Chris McAdams. Uh, fucking the noble art that was called it was in Bella Houston Park in the Palace of Art that was heavy that rhymed there didn't it and I went down and I remember obviously first half you start training and that then eventually you get to sparring and I remember he says to me about great get yourself a gum shield you're gonna be sparring next time you're in and I was absolutely creaming in my pants I was pure buzzing I was like yes I'm getting this spa because I just wanted to fight, not because I liked fighting, because I wanted to be like Rocky, like the pure 
every cunt cheering them not and cunts it. So I remember my first sparring session, right? And I get put in against a boy. It was obviously I've always been quite a tall guy. I've always been quite big. This boy was maybe about up to my shoulder. Maybe, maybe even a wee bit taller. He was smaller than me, right? And he was he was dead skinny looking. And I remember thinking, are they having a laugh with this guy, man? I'm fucking going to take it easy on him. And I think, I, I don't know, I can't remember if I say to the coach, but I was kind of thinking, they're having a laugh here. So this is a pure mismatch. And then I remember saying to myself, right, I'll just, I'll take it easy on him. I don't want to fucking hurt him or anything. First round goes, and he walked right up to me, and he just went bang and smashed us in the face. And I remember... But see that way when you get punched and you can feel the tears in your eyes. No, because you're crying, just that kind of way your eyes are watering. And immediately humbled. Immediately humbled. I was like, I, I'm never underestimating anybody again. But, see, that, that lesson alone is a fantastic lesson to learn. And only through the medium of combat sports you'll probably learn that. You're not really going to respect somebody that just cracks you in the street. You're going to be like, I can come here you. But the thing is with me, I used to watch a lot of videos of like Mike Tyson and that. Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson was a small heavyweight, right? If anybody's not really familiar with it. So heavyweights are generally quite tall, but six foot and higher. Six foot is probably considered like a smaller heavyweight. Mike Tyson was like 5'10". Roughly, I can't remember his exact height. It was quite small for a heavyweight and he was broad. So the way he would fight, he would fight for a lower centre of gravity, so he would kind of duck down under punches, rather, because he didn't have the reach, he was always bet on a reach advantage, it wasn't a beat, but the fighters he was generally fighting were taller, and they had a reach advantage, so he had to duck under the reach, and then come up and hit them, so I didn't have that problem, I wasn't small, I was taller than everybody, but I would watch Mike Tyson videos, where he's ducking underneath and all that, and I would go into the spa and try and do it, I'd try and duck underneath cunts that are fucking up about five foot eight and all that. And I was getting the heat punched off me. The coach is like, what are you doing? Use your reach, you're taller. And I just wouldn't listen. Because I was, I was dead fucking, uh, did I use the word arrogant, maybe, eh? I was young. I was just young and daft and naive. I wouldn't listen to a word that anybody told me. It was just, I was just a typical teenager, I suppose. But eventually, and that's another thing as well. So... We're familiar with the old Adesia fucking, the, the Ned, the Glasgow Ned, they go into A&E and they want, they've got a big slash and they want the nurses to make it look bigger so they look like a hard man or the guy that wears that little slash in his face is a, like a, a badge of honour back in the day. So my view on this when it came to the boxing was if you were punch drunk, if you were a bit, one of the guys that were inclined to talk to doors, you had too many hits to read, like Rocky, eventually, then that was a mark of you being a true boxer. So, I would go into sparring, and like, people would punch me, and I would try and hear their shots, and I was trying to get purposely get punched. At times after I like, sparring, my head would be ringing, because I just let people just combo my head about. Looking back now, it is mental, because I hate getting punched. But, eh... Uh, I so when you tie that in with just me no listening, this and that, the coaches were just kind of like, uh, they just geed up hope with me. And uh, I eventually geed up hope with myself. I'm like, I'm getting nowhere with this. Surprisingly, surprisingly, I'm getting nowhere with this by no listening to a word anybody's telling me. So I chucked it. And uh, then, no long after that, I end up getting to jail and end up getting right into the bodybuilding and that. I've documented this in other podcasts, TikToks, fucking you name it. I've no shut up about it. But well, in the past few years, I've I've lent back towards boxing because you're full of that fucking pent up aggression. Life can be annoying at times. People can be annoying. Shit can bug you, and you need somewhere to channel that. I think for years I used drugs, I used drink, I used alcohol as an escape. But what happens when the thing you used to escape needs an escape? You're needing an escape for your escape. So, boxing has helped provide that. I got back into boxing. And it was a humbling experience because I told myself, oh, I've done it for a year, man. I'll just, I'll be schooling cunts. It felt as if, it felt as if I had never done it before. Which is good because you're coming in with a blank slate. 
But the thing is no, at this point in my life, I understand things a lot more. I understand you're meant to get tired. You're meant to push yourself. You're meant to be bad before you get good. You're meant to be shite. Being shite is a part of life. You're going to be shite until you get good. An expert in anything was always a beginner. Every fucking time. We can see some people are naturally gifted, this and that. You can have a natural knack for something, but at the end of the day, your first time doing it, you're going to be pish. That I couldn't fathom when I was younger. I just didn't... I didn't have the skills, I was young, and no many people do have these skills, they don't have this knowledge, maybe nowadays, you've got access to YouTube, you've got these inspirational videos, you've got a lot of information out there, back, I'm talking maybe like, 2008, 2007, late 2000s, when I was in boxing, you didn't know, YouTube wasn't what it is now, I think I had Bebo, Bebo might not even been a big king then, and Bebo was just a lot of shit. But as much as it was fun at the time, it was good. Anybody watching this remembers Bebo. The only thing you used Bebo for was like sending people love hearts. A bird you're trying to batter into, you drop her a wee love heart and hope she gives you one back. Or uh, fucking just posting mad fucking random shit on it. I remember one time in Bebo, right? any of my fans or the people that watch the podcast that are Rangers supporters, please don't take any offence to this, but I was young, right, so I remember Rangers were in Manchester, was it Manchester when the riots occurred, I think it was like the Europa, UEFA, somebody will correct me on this, right, I don't really follow football, and there was 40s of Rangers fans fighting with posts and that, and I'd put a few on my Bebo, it, there was no nothing in it, I just posted them there, and I remembered, uh, I was on Yahoo Messenger, this is how long ago it was, right, and I was talking to this lassie on Yahoo, if there's any young people watching this, Yahoo Messenger is like Facebook Messenger, but it's just a messenger, there, it's no what like you go into Facebook and you've got stats, you've got 40s, then the messenger is like a wee side component, the messenger was just messenger, you just go on, it was like a chat room, I was talking to this bird, right, and she ended up adding my Bebo, and she's like, there was a photo of one of the Rangers fans getting bitten in the leg by a dog, and she was like, ah, that's my uncle in that photo, like, he's died now, he passed away, and I'm like, ah, fuck, sorry to hear that, and I was like, ah, eh, because she was asking why have you posted their photos, and I'm like, ah, I just, I just seen them on our website, and I just, I just posted them, and she's like, ah, you've wrote in the caption, fat cunt getting bit, <laughs> for fuck's sake, because <laughs> I was pure fucking not, I mean, I was like, I didn't know what to say, and anybody watching this, if anybody knows the guy, listen man, I, ho- I mean no harm to anybody when I'm saying that, I just found it, just that way, I wasn't slagging the guy in that photo, as much as how mental that might sound, I've always been a very blunt person, the guy was quite large and he was getting bit. A cunt in Scotland is a noun. It's a verb and it's an adjective. So me saying fat cunt isn't getting bit. Fat cunt is getting bit, isn't he? Me slagging or laughing or mocking anybody. That's me just describing what I see in the photo. So anybody watching this, it's like, I'm going to order. Like when I started telling that story, I was like, should I tell it? But I'll tell it. But I, Bebo. That's all Bebo really was. So that was back when I was younger. When I was, was I trying to discover life? I didn't know what I was trying to discover. I was in, I remember it. I used to spar with a cunt. When I was in boxing, I used to spar with a boy's dad. There was a boy in my class, in my year in school, and I used to spar with his dad. The cunt was a painter and decorator. <laughs> Cunt came in and he's worked fucking trousers covered in paint and that, man, I was sparring the cunt, that was a mad experience, that's a wee story I'd tell the cunts, I used to spar with a cunt, I, I was in my school, I used to spar with his dad, you know what I mean, just say that just to make myself sound like a pure gypsy, but I boxing is a great discipline because when you go, and like, I've went to the gym for years, man, and you're in the gym, I can go into the gym and fuck about, I can look at my phone, I can, 
I can take a wee bit of a longer rest, I can fanny about, I can go into the gym, I've went into the gym rough, we come downs. I've went into the gym still mad, wait for any out of four. Fuck that, I did that boxing. Boxing is unforgiving. And life is unforgiving. And the skills you learn with that, and boxing might not be your thing, maybe jiu-jitsu, maybe kickboxing, maybe fucking MMA, maybe eating, just... The, the reason why I'm using a combat sport or a, a martial art as such is these days teach you a certain level of discipline because when you're competing against somebody in the sense where you're in the pocket of danger, I played a wee bit of football when I was younger. When I say I played football, I went down to Nether Craigs with my pals and fucking kicked a ball, but never played for a team, nothing like that. Honestly, you couldn't pay me to play football these days. Honest to God, I have no interest in it whatsoever. I'll maybe put the Scotland game on if they're playing as a bit of background, yes, if they win, they don't win shite, but I couldn't name you any football players apart from like the famous ones, like Ronaldo Messi and that. I couldn't tell you what, what, where Celtic or Rangers are in the league. I really have no interest in any of it. The only time I really have an opinion on football is when Rangers are playing at Ibrox and I kind of get fucking driving past the place for the traffic. That's when you get an opinion out of me, and trust me, it's a fucking negative one. But apart from that, football doesn't interest me. No, I mean, if, if I want to watch guys playing with their boys, I would just jump onto the porn hub, not I'm talking about. But that's a thing, people will just look at. You don't watch football? What do you watch then? What? YouTube? Podcasts? Documentaries? Anything that isn't football. It's just something about it. Don't get me wrong. I used to I'm I'm really revealing my cards here. Fuck it. Authenticity is all you get in this podcast. I hide nothing. It's strange that I'm much more open about talking about my previous criminal history than I am about what football team I used to support. Basically I used to be a Celtic man, right? So I used to go to the games, I used to have a season ticket when I was young. Well, I'm talking about what like, fucking maybe for the age of twelve or something. And I used to love it. I used to love football. And uh, I used to go to the games. It was weird as fuck. So my bra worked off shore. So he'd be here for like two weeks out of the month. So it was two on two half. And he would use the season ticket for two weeks. And then when he was away, my dad would use it. So it would be shots of between my dad and my brother taking me to the games. But this is how weird it was, right? So see, at a football stadium, see you've got the big screens at each end of the park. Basically, see where each set of goals are. My season ticket was in a stand behind one set of goals. And their season ticket was in the other end of the stadium in another set of goals. So... My, my dad, he would always want to leave, like, say, 10 minutes before the end, just so he wouldn't get caught in the traffic. So he'd be like, all right, when that clock reaches, like, 85 minutes, 80 minutes, or whatever the time he would say, he's like, head down. But the thing is, I'm really short-sighted, so I could never see it. So I'd be sitting squinting try to, across the field and trying to see my dad. I couldn't never see him. I'd need to ask the guy next to me to tell me what the time was at so I could bounce. I remember one day, see when uh, at half time, the day the, what did they call it? Is it the windfall draw or something? You hold up the, the, the fucking wee hang, what the fuck, the, the match programme? You hold it up, and if they pick you, you go down, you win money. So they'd done that at half time, and I was on the screen. I was sitting on the screen like that, and I, I, I didn't even realise, I couldn't fucking see. And uh, I just heard the guy behind me going, yes! And then he went away and went down. And fucking, I, like, uh, that week in school, people like, I seen you on the screen at the, the game and I'm like, what was I there? I didn't realise. Couldn't see fuck all. But that was always, I always found that odd, just that my, me and my dad have had a weird relationship. Still, date. my dad's just a very distant cunt. He's just the way he is. And uh, I just found that funny. We would go to a football game and sit. We couldn't sit further away from each other. We were literally opposite ends of the stadium. But uh, I so I used to go to the games, went for a good few years. 
I think I remember this was the era when I supported Selic. It was when Arthur Boric was the keeper. Shinsuke Nakamura used to play. Maciek Sarovsky, he used to play for them and all. Because I remember Selic playing Man United. I think it was the Champions League. And Nakamura scored a free kick. And we won one nothing. Was it one nothing? We won the game anyway, and it was like a big massive thing. I was pure praying. The place was silent before he fucking took that free kick. And I remember that it was like I was praying and up, oh, please let it go in, please let it go in. And then it would end the place fucking erupted. But uh I see when I got to about 15, 16, I just started losing interest in it. I was just like, nah, I'm just no into it anyway. I think Selic started getting beat. I was that shows you how much of a fan I was. I think they started getting pure beat. And then I was just like oh, just kind of, just, sometimes you just lose interest in things, but it's weird now, it's like, say like, man, it's like, I couldn't tell you the last game they won, I couldn't tell you, I don't even know who the matter is, Ronnie Dyla? No, I know Ronnie Dyla, what the fuck's that other cunt's name? What the fuck's his name? For, I for, see, I forgot his name, the guy, if you get a bag of cans, I went, Brendan Rogers. he's the manager, isn't he? See, I'm clueless. I don't even know who the Rangers manager is either. It's like, it, it pure doesn't interest me whatsoever. But uh, I understand why people like it, man. But for me, uh, it's like watching paint dry these days. But as I say, I'm more into combat sports. I like a bit of boxing. I like a bit of UFC. But uh, right now, what I'm liking is the Scotland social media influencer boxing. And it's, when I go on TikTok, man, I don't usually spend a lot of time reading comments. Unless it's, healthy birds in the comments and I'm finding out they're at and I'm sliding in but what I'm seeing you've got a lot of people that, there is a big buzz about it let's be real here there's a big buzz about it because you've got like the Jake Paul scene you've got the Misfits scene it's about time bo Scotland got involved in this and I was actually talking in the gym I, I bumped into an old guy in the gym the other day and you can tell imagine an old guy very opinionated especially about this he didn't say it in so many words but his gist was it's a lot of shite that why don't these people just go and fight amateur if they're what I do it and I'm like, ah, what's the difference? Really, as I say earlier, right, I'd done a boxing fight last year. There's no much money in it. There's no really any exposure in it. There's no really much opportunity for it. Like, people that do boxing, if you want to get any modicum of success, you need to be willing to do it as a full-scale career. You need to dedicate your life to it. See, in this, this TikTok boxing event, I've made money, I've I've gained exposure, I've gotten fitter, it's given me focus, it's got people talking, see the amount of people that stoke me in the street and they want to talk about this event, oh, when's your fight, uh, I ain't got to do me and all that, everybody, it's the first thing people say to me these days, before people go, oh, right, what's happening, five or no, it's like everybody, everybody I meet that's that recognises me after socials, that's the thing they want to talk about. But, eh, uh, you're seen online on TikTok and all that kind of thing, you've got all the people, ah, this is a lot of shit, oh, I wish they was just getting to fuck this and that, it's like, why are people just so determined to tear something down? Like, I want to go into this charity thing, right? Because this is the, the hotly contested thing, oh, it's meant to be a charity event, and this and that. So, initially, I was asked to fight in a boxing event, a TikTok influencer boxing event, and they were going to donate the proceeds to charity. That's fair enough. Now all of a sudden it's became this thing, like, ah, you're raising money for charity. I've raised money for charity already by fucking taking part and people buying tickets. That's There's money been raised there already, but now it's like people are just looking for anything to try and tear something down. Is it a Scottish thing? Does it happen a lot in England? Why are people so fucking, it's like, do you know why to see people progress and create something good? Look at the buzz there is around it. It's like, people, it's no a thing, right, see me, when I, I've just made, told you the reasons uh, I used to watch football and now I don't watch it. See when there's football on the telly, an old firm, Champions League, whatever, do you think I go online and comment on every talk sport interview, any fucking, I don't know, like BBC interview, or any coverage of match of the day, and all that. 
lot of shite. I'll not be watching this. I just don't watch it. But yet yeah, with this, people have this sudden need to tell you they're not gonna watch it. They're telling you this is a lot of shite. I'll not be watching this. When he waste my money, don't. We're not, we're not begging you for money. We don't need your money in order. It's not a fucking GoFundMe. We're not asking for a pound a whip, a fiver a whip to make this thing happen. Let's raise money. Well, it's got, the thing's already happening irrespective of you. It's happening in spite of you. Whether you cease to exist tomorrow, today, whether you jump in a fucking spaceship and fly to Uranus, literally and or figuratively, it's happening. There's nothing you can do or say that will change that. But there's this sudden need to let people know your opinion on it. Ah, uh, I need to say, it's, you're, you're not a fucking pundit, mate. You a TikTok pundit? He's fucking peace, man. It's like, what is your problem, mate? Because Right, if we're going to go down, is it the fact that it's unlicensed boxing, technically? So white-collar boxing? Because well, there's white-collar shows happening every month, every week, in Scotland alone. Why are you not voicing your opinion on that? So it's obviously it's no the, the fact that it's maybe the guys that aren't professionals, that aren't licensed, fighting each other. That's not the issue. What is the problem? I understand, right, and I'm going to say it. Is it the fact Kaz Milligan's running the show? I wouldn't blame you for that. He does come across a bit of an egocentric fucking prick at times. Is this show about him? I don't know. Is he trying to make it about him? Maybe. I could say that, but I'm making this show about me, so I'd be saying the exact same thing about myself anyway, because it is the 5 show. I am the main event. But, end of the day, why do you really not like it? Why, why have you got such a strong, outspoken opinion about it? Or is it just the fact that it's progression in Scotland? It seems to be that Scottish people have a burning desire to try and tear down anything that is progressive in the sense where we try and create events. We try and bring a bit of buzz to Scotland. We try and make our own thing that's happening elsewhere in the world. It's not the first event of its kind. I think we're late to the party. I can understand maybe... And this is what I say to people, right? What does this event offer that you will not get in a white collar event, in an amateur event, in a some professional events at a certain level? I don't know what it offers. How many people do you hate that are on TikTok? Creators I'm talking about, not just fucking people you know. Like people, if, if, if I were to put myself in that bracket, I'll use the term creator just for the avoidance of doubt, right? People that have got like maybe upwards of 20k followers, they've, they've, they do content, they do maybe promotional stuff, they're known within the app, right? How many of these people do you fucking hate? I, I hate a few. So there's always somebody, there's people you like and there's people you hate, that's just social media. There's people you follow, there's people you don't follow because you don't know about them, and there's people you might follow because you hate them and you want to rip the piss out them. Kaz Mulligan being one, he's got a big following and people just want to rip the fucking hole right out him. And there's people you just don't follow because, nah, I'm not interested in that guy. But there is people you fucking don't like. You just like, ah, he's a prick. She's a prick, maybe. Would it not be a great thing to see that person in a boxing match against somebody who could very possibly punch the utter fuck right at them? I mean, I'm not going to encourage anybody to go and attack anybody because you don't like them on TikTok, but use me and Jasper, for instance. People might not like me. People definitely don't like me. That's fine. I embrace that. People definitely don't like Jasper, and I understand that. So that's the thing with us two fighting each other. Some people want to see me get a beating. Some people want to see him get a beating. So it's known the, the fact that fucking some charity thing, uh, don't get me wrong, it's great that money's gone to charity, we should be grateful that money has gone to charity, 
There's charities been named. It's like, what else do you want us to do? You know what I'm talking about? But embrace the fact, support the fact that you're going to possibly see somebody you don't like get their fucking head punched in. Is that no great content or what? I think it is. And obviously, I hate to disappoint anybody that doesn't like me. It'd be quite weird if you're watching this podcast at this point. I'm not going to get my face punched in. I'm going to annihilate Jasper. I'm going to not come into next week. Trust me, you're listening now. You're listening. Open up your fucking ears. Open these up, right? In the first round, I'm going to dish out a highlight real knockout to Jasper. Watch this space. Watch it. In fact, don't watch this space. Watch the fight. You can access it via pay-per-view on Legan Promotions, but if you're on TikTok on the night, I wouldn't be surprised if you find a, a stream somewhere. No saying I'm encouraging you to go watch it, but I'm, I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say if there's a stream there, don't watch it. It's like if it's there, it's there. But be prepared. I'm going to be setting our fireworks and the target's going to be Jasper's jaw. So I'm going to offer my predictions. There's going to be amateur bouts, apparently. I think there's about four amateur bouts. I don't really know any of the amateurs fighting, bar we Aaron. Shout out young Aaron. He's winning. He's been sparring with me and uh, my man Dylan. Shout out Dylan McCormack. He's definitely winning. I'm going to be in his corner. No, literally, but in a spiritual sense. So, let's get on to the influencer boxing fights. Oxy B versus Adam. So, initially, Sean Paul was meant to be fighting Adam, and uh, Sean Paul was just writing the and didn't turn up to open workout, and didn't turn up to the presser, so naturally he got replaced, which is fair enough. And uh, I think he was saying online, in fact, that he wasn't even going to be here for the fight, so it's probably worked out just as well. No offence to Sean Paul, I would have given the fight to Adam purely for the fact Sean Paul wasn't training. I don't think he's got much experience in a boxing ring. Adam, he's a kickboxer. He's got fighting experience. He'll have fighting IQ. And he's been training. And no matter who the fuck you are, see if you're no training and you're fighting a guy that is training, you're going to get your ass beat. Simple as that. But now he's out the game and Oxy B stepped in. I've seen Oxy, he's been training quite a lot uh, in the past while. And I've noticed him, he's been posting his stories and that, man. He's getting a lot sharper, a lot better. I think he's a southpaw as well. I think Adam's orthodox, so... That is a lot more of an interesting matchup for me. Because now... Before... No offence to Sean Paul, it would have been one-sided. Sean Paul was in the training, simple as that, and Adam was. Now, we've got two people that are evenly matched, I'd say. I don't know if Oxy B's fought... He's definitely no fought in a while if he has. He's sparred. Adam's obviously had fights, but no, this might be his first boxing fight. And I don't know. I don't really know. It's an awkward matchup for Adam because Oxy B is the southpaw, but Oxy B is also the, the more natural boxer. So Oxy B has got that, but also Adam has got a bit, bit more of ex a wealth of experience in a fight sense. But as I say, it's a kickboxing fight, so I'm really not too sure who wins that one. If I was to pick, I would possibly give it to Oxy. I think Oxy might just win, but I'm not going to say Oxy's going to flatten him. Because I think this could go either way, but if I'm going to pick anybody, I would lean toward Oxy. Just for the fact that Oxy is solely boxing focused. Like he's been training for the, the good past while, he's looking fit, he's looking sharp. Adam... He's having to adopt his style and adapt from the kickboxing into the boxing sense. Plus as well, right? Oxy's went from no having a fight to having a fight. Adam had a fight against one opponent that he was preparing for mentally. And two weeks before it, the, he's been put up against somebody who is a lot more experienced, a lot more skilled and a lot more ready. That can fuck with you. You see it happening at, at the top level. When you kind of build up somebody in your head, you, you visualise fighting them. Your, your energy is directed towards them. So with two weeks out, he's had to shift that. And that can be a bit of a head fuck at times because then you're like, ah, right, because I'm sure before, right, we had him training the way he's training and 
Sean Paul no train in your head you're like, ah, right, I've got this. I've got this cunt in the bag. But no, suddenly he's got a challenge. And no saying Sean Paul wouldn't have been a challenge, but Oxy B is a much bigger challenge than Sean Paul would have been. So no, suddenly the last two weeks he's having to write. The fear kicks in, the nerves kick in, like ah, right, I need to be on the ball here. There's a point, there's a chance this could go either way. So I do Oxy, I think Oxy B's got a lot of advantage, but listen, the fight could go either way. So I do, I'm looking forward to that one. Next up, you've got Matty versus Higgy. That's probably, apart from mine and Jasper's, one of the most hotly anticipated fights. We Matty, obviously, he's like a wee squirrel. What a squirrel on speed. And uh, Higgy, it's funny, it's like, it's like pure polar opposites. Matty's pure full of energy and pure buzzing about, man. He's like a fucking rabbit It's just at this hole. And Higgy just looks as if he can't be arsed. And I don't know if it's he can't be arsed with the event or he just can't be arsed with him. It's funny, man. It's like, when he turned up to the press conference with the Superman outfit, he, he clearly made some level of effort. But to that point, he was just, he was sitting on his phone and all that and he was just like, ah, I don't know, I think it's just, <laughs> it's just I, I, I don't know if he could even be asked matching his energy. But he's another one, this is the thing, right? See this fucking full event? It's got two types of people. You've got people that are training like fuck, and you've got people that only giving a fuck. I think Higgy falls into the category of no giving a fuck. I know Matty's been training, I think he's been training quite well. Higgy, I don't really know what he's been doing. I don't know where he's been training. I know my coach Jay, shout out Jay McFarlane, the ghost, best coach in Scotland, offered him to come and train with us and he never took up that offer. So either he's got training elsewhere or he's no training. I've seen one video of him hitting a bag, but we'll find out in fight night. But uh, I'm curious to see what Matt is going to be like in the ring because he's going to be nervous. You've seen him, he's hyperactive, he's high energy. See that, see him, unless you've got the stamina and the cardio in order to sustain that, that'll fucking blow you out quite quickly. Because the thing is, see when Matty's doing his ring walk, I don't think he's going to be composed. You've seen him at the press conference, he's like pure, he's, that's just what he's like. He's like one of the fucking Judicel rabbits <laughs> hooked up to a fucking lamppost. But when he's doing his ring walk, keep an eye on it if you're watching it. Watch him in his ring walk because if he jumps out that pure light, pure bouncing and that, he's going to gas. Because the nerves tire you very, very quickly. That's the thing as well because if Higgy goes out that kind of calm, composed way or just that no giving a fuck way, it's very possible Matty can burn his cell out quite quickly and Higgy might have the stamina advantage because he's not really giving a fuck. So, if I'm looking at it for a training aspect, who's training for who? Matty has the advantage. He's been putting in the training. I don't, I've not really seen him sparring apart from that fucking thing with Kaz, but, uh, Higgy, he's been getting on it and shit like that and on. I think Matty's been pure dieting. It's just been like two pure extremes. But on the night, depending on the, how the nerves affect them because let's be real here right everybody's talking a good game everybody's talking a good game apart from Adam and maybe and Oxy as well obviously now Nady's really been in front of a big crowd to perform obviously Shooty's played football and that but this is a different type of thing it's like I can go into a football pitch and blend in I can go in and fuck about I can, I can take I can be lazy and get away with it and can I get away with being lazy in a boxing ring? You're the sole focus. You're a target for the audience and the guy in front of you. So see, the thing is, when you're going out there and you've got all these nerves and you've got that crowd and suddenly the expectation of your words is about to collapse on you, people's asses are going to fucking fold, man. You're going to see some people going out there talking a the big game own camera, because remember, some of these people are just TikTokers, none of these people have performed in front of crowds, none of these people have done this stuff, most of these people are comfortable in front of, with a phone in front of their face, and that's easy, you can fuck up as many times as you want, and nobody sees it, 
You fuck up in here, everybody's going to see it. So, that's a big, massive thing that people have not really taken, taken into consideration. And it's probably the biggest thing. Like, you can do all the preparation in the world, physically. Are you preparing to be in front of a crowd? How do you prepare for that? You can't really. Mentally, you can prepare for it, but until you're actually there. So, this is where I've got a massive advantage as well. I've been in front of a crowd. If I go back to Matty and Higgy for the fight night, it's a close one. I think, training-wise, fitness-wise, Matty is the stru- the fitter man, the the one that's putting the mere effort, but if the nerves get to him, it's possible that might not matter a fuck, but I'd say maybe Matty, just for the, he's dedicated himself to this, so I would give it to him, but I could go either way also. Anyway, on to the main event of the night, me and Jasper. I've said it already, first round, highlight, real KO, Jasper's getting knocked flat. And that's a training thing as well, I'll go back to I'll, I'll start listing my points. So, since I gave Jasper the opportunity to fight me, I've been training. I've been training for December, I've been sparring for like December, early January. Consistently, I've been in the gym. One point, one week, I had an, uh, injured my Achilles, so my ankle. So I couldn't train because I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I was limping on it. But I was still in my house doing circuits. I was doing ab workouts. I was doing, eventually I was getting to a point where I was doing full body circuits. I've been training through that. I, I was ill for the first few months of the year. I was on and off, fucking with the flu, with coughing up stuff and that, feeling run down. Still training through it. That's the thing, when in Jasper, he's taught about, oh, I've got the flu, I've no been no well, oh, I've up my back, and this and that, and he's no training. They're excuses. I've had the same problems he's had, apart from the, the, the family, but I've been no well, I've been injured, and I've still been training through it. And he doesn't take it seriously when I say it, because it sounds like trash talk, but see, when you're preparing for a fight, you're also mentally preparing for it. So it's what, that kind of inner self-talk that you have with yourself during the grueling moments, during the hard times, when you're struggling through training, when you can't be asked going to train, what are you telling yourself when you're getting smashed in sparring? What is it you're saying to yourself? Because see when you're saying, oh, I'm fucked, I'm nowhere, I can't train, it's like, see when you're in a fight, that is the shit that comes back to you. Because when you're thinking of excuses, your brain is programming itself to think of excuses. So when you're getting your fucking head caved in, and you're running out of breath, which will happen, and you're sitting thinking, fuck, your brain's going to automatically think of excuses. Winners never made excuses. Winners don't make excuses. And the flip side of that, when you're looking for opportunity, like I was, like, right, I've done my Achilles, how else can I train? How else can I still get up and break a sweat? I can do abs, done abs, right, I've done this, I'm no well, push myself, get into the gym, at least I'm there, a shite workout is better than no workout, getting smashed and sparring. I've, many times I've felt like getting up and sparring is unreal. Many times I'm like, ah, fuck this, I'm like, fuck this shit, why am I doing this? And I've stayed there, not once I've said stop, Never tell Nadie to stop, not once. See, that that's what serves you in a fight. Because no matter what direction the fight's gone, that's the thing that's going to come to you. Moan. Because you felt that, you've been there before, you've been in the fire. So when people say, talk about this, loudest in the room, the weakest in the room, or he's all talk, this and that, this isn't just some mad bravado fucking shit talking to promote a fight, this is real, real, real words that have been generated through hours upon hours, weeks upon weeks, days upon days, a blood, sweat and graft, I've bust my fucking hole in the lead up to this fight, I'm in peak physical condition, I'm in peak mental condition, my preparation for this has been unquestionable, I've been doing stuff that nobody else has been doing, I've been doing Ricky, I've been doing Fucking, I've been preparing my mindset, I've been fucking doing energy cleanse, I've been doing cold water, I've been doing fucking infrared saunas, I've been doing everything. If Jasper was to pull out the Mora, and I was to be put in against somebody like Adam Wilkes, somebody that had been really preparing for a fight, I'd still demolish them. 
It doesn't no matter who's in front of me. They are just another carcass on the canvas. Simple as that. That's not me being big-headed. I'm not big-headed in any of this. I'm big-fisted, and I'm going to give him an absolute fisting, physically and sexually, and I'm going to enjoy it. He's going to enjoy it. Jasper, much respect to him. He's a nice guy. For the eight minutes that I'm fighting him, he's going to be my enemy. He's going to be the objective, and he's going to be my target, and I'm going to terminate him. Simple as that. That's just the game we play. End of the day, see if I'd wrap my horns and hold my chin, he's going to try and take me out, so... I'm not going to give him that opportunity and I'll treat him with the same regard or disregard, should I say. So, if you're a fan of Jasper or you're a fan of mine, my advice to you is during no fight, do not go to the toilet, do not go to pour yourself a drink, do not even blink because it will be over and done before you know it. I'm going to fuck him right up and that's just the way it is. I'll be the fight of the night See, when I come out, to my, when I, my music comes in, my entrance occurs, people are going to forget there's another fight after that. That's going to feel like the main event. It's going to look like the main event because it is the main event. I am a main event fighter, and it's the Hawaii Five O show. Don't forget that, man. So, if you want to see the Five O show, then tune in, 31st of March. So, first round KO, Hawaii Five O for the win. Next up, we've got Kaz in the property, boss. So, this is the main event, according to some people. We've seen it in the press on that. The property boss has been, obviously, had to lose, like, two stone to make weight. Gimme's due, I'd say. He's out of all the competitors. I think these two have been kind of training the most. I would say Kaz is probably training a bit more than the property boss because he's shitting himself. But, uh, uh, that'll be an interesting matchup. Kaz has got the, the age advantage on his side. And he's definitely got the skill advantage. As much as how he wants to see, he's never done boxing in his life and not. His dad was a professional boxer. He's done all these fights, trained uh, fucking Peter Harrison and all that. But yet, he's never done one lesson with Kaz. He never showed Kaz how he hit a pad or throw a punch or nothing. Which is horse shit. I've, how many fucking dads or uncles have you met, have you had? That have not even got any boxing experience. I've gone, I've tried to show you how to throw a punch. Everybody's met them. You know what I mean? So, but your dad's a full-scale boxer, yet he's never tried to show you how to fight. Come off it, mate. And you can tell when he's hitting the pads. He's not great, but you can tell he's he's done it before. Shield J, obviously, he played football back in his day. I don't think he's got much boxing experience, but the thing is with this, right, these fights, today, we talk about boxing experience, that comes into play when it's actually boxers that are fighting. These guys aren't the boxers. We're no boxers. We're people that do TikTok. We're like in, I hate using the term influencers, but let's just use that, right? Social media people. So see, I think you can get by with like aggressive brutality as opposed to, if I go in against a boxer and I'm just aggressive, I've just got the scheme in me, I've got the Ned in me, it's what I fight. It'll no work. I'll get fucked up. If I'm getting in against a guy who's just done a bit of boxing, it can work. And I think Shields may possess that. But, uh, as I say, he's getting a weight advantage. A 10 kilo weight advantage, Shields is getting, but we say weight advantage, but he's had to lose like two stone to get that advantage, so he's lost a lot of weight. How much will that serve him? I don't know. But uh, he's definitely got a bit more meat in the bones than Kaz, but that's the thing as well. I don't know about Shields. Shields has been on telly. He's fucking... He used to play football and that kind of thing. It is, it's a different dynamic as well, man, so I'll not really use that as a great example. But Kaz has really got a lot of this riding on his shoulders. He's talked a good game. He said he's all these things. He's put his name on it. He's put his face on it. That's how he's running the first event. But Kaz hasn't really done anything in front of a crowd. Not that I know of. So, how is he going to fare? Because he's never had a boxing match, according to him. He's going to have his first boxing fight. First time in front of a crowd. He's going to back up all these things he's been saying. Personally, I think his ass is going to collapse. And that's no offence to him. I just genuinely think that's what's going to happen because he's not used to it. What I'm talking about. Suddenly, the weight of expectation falls upon your shoulders. And uh, we see how that one pans out. 
So, don't get me wrong, he's looking quite sharp on the pads. He's obviously been training. I've not really seen Shields, he's not good much away, and I like that. So, Shields could be a dark horse. Kaz has probably got the experience advantage, he's definitely got the age advantage. Shields, he's got a bit more, he's got a different kind of experience, he's got life experience, isn't he? He might have learned lessons that Kaz hasn't learned, but end of the day, it's four two minute rounds, it's like, how long does it take before you can implement that? So, personally, I don't think Kaz would be fighting him if Kaz thought Shields could beat him, but that's my opinion, but uh, we'll see. I think Kaz will win it. I don't think, maybe, I'd say maybe points more than anything. If he catches Shields and, and, and it gets stopped, I don't think he'll no knock out Shields, but there's a possibility if Shields gasses out and Kaz hits him with a flurry, it might get stopped, but you never know, but I think Kaz might win it, but obviously if Shields wins it, on you go, big man. TikTok, social media. But that's my predictions for the event. So, what are your predictions? Comment them below. If you think Jasper's going to win, say it. That's the thing, people think, like saying Jasper's going to win affects me. That gives me a buzz. I love that. I love having people to prove wrong. I've said it before, I've been proving people wrong all my life. It's like a drug. It's like a pre-workout. It's like a good cup of coffee. It's motivation. See, if everybody was saying I was going to win, I'd be like that. It would be boring. I like having people to prove wrong and I like that it's kind of that it's kind of evenly matched. It's funny as well because people don't realise the absolute doing I'm going to game. I'm going to absolutely smash him to pieces. So, you're a fan of Jasper, tune in so I can shut you up. And if you're a fan of me, tune in because you can see me do my thing. But anyway, I've got some sparring to get to the day that I'm going to bounce people. You have a great day and the next time I shall see you is, ooh, will be next Sunday. Anyway, if I see you at the fight, I see you. If you see, if you're watching the stream, However, check us out. If you see me, but at the fight or whatever, I'll see what's happening. Say hello. We can chat. But Ty will get me before the fight, man, because I'll be in the zone. But anyway, catch up with you soon, people. Like, like subscribe, and don't get wide. Catches. <laughs>